Hey guys, it's Nate Story here with Bright Agritech, and today we are going to talk about ladybugs uh, and probably touch a little bit on other biocontrols in indoor growing environments. So there are a lot of folks out there that struggle with aphids and whiteflies and thrips and all of these different um, uh, critters, uh, you know, we, spider mites, you name it. All of these things, they're issues in greenhouses, they're issues in indoor growing environments as well. Even if you are great at exclusion, even if you're great at keeping them out of the environment, inevitably one of them will find their way in and then you've got a problem. So there's basically a few different ways to deal with it. Uh, there's cultural controls, there are chemical controls, there are all these different ways that we can kind of control pests. But the big one that I want to talk about today is biocontrols, and specifically using ladybugs in indoor growing environments. So there's an issue a lot of the time with using insects, especially biocontrols in indoor environments. And the reason there is if we're under like red and blue light with not very much, you know, basically the spectrum is way off um, and they have kind of a hard time locating prey sometimes. Sometimes they have a hard time uh, just moving around. Uh, they get disoriented and they don't really like indoor growing environments. They're just not natural, right? So when we put ladybugs just in a, in a big zip farm or something, we just release them out there. We'll find them all like, they'll fly to the corner and they'll just clump up in a ball in a corner somewhere, right? They don't like uh, being, being out in those types of environments. So um, this was something that uh, the folks here at Bright Agritech started to mess with a while back. And I was really, really skeptical at first. But basically we figured out some great ways to use biocontrols in indoor growing environments. So uh, the thing that we lean on the most is ladybugs. And um, I know we've talked about ladybugs before, mostly in our greenhouse. In greenhouses, ladybugs are way, way easier to use. You know, they come in a bag like this, but this is full of ladybugs. And um, we order a big bag like this, and then we'll use it a number of different times. So we'll just kind of dump a portion of it out every time we use it, and we just keep them in the fridge, and they'll last for many months in your fridge. So it's worth buying a kind of big lot of them and then just releasing small amounts at a time. So we use ladybugs specifically on our seedling cart. So most of the issues with bugs starts in your seedling cart, okay? These plants are really nice and dense and close to each other. And um, you know, they're, they're, there's bridges for the aphids to crawl across and aphids are really our biggest problem. So what we started to do is we put, we put these vinyl covers on our cart and then uh, we basically turn off all the lights except for just like one uh, light per, per uh, level and release ladybugs in there. Just a ton of them. Just smother our seedling cart in ladybugs. And they just crawl around and chomp and clean out the entire thing in no time flat and lay a lot of eggs in the process. So then you take your seedlings, you transplant them into towers, you take them out into the greater space out here. And instead of having all of these ladybugs that can just fly off of the produce, you end up with lots of ladybug larvae, right? And they're crawling around the plants now because they can't fly. They're crawling around eating aphids and loving it, doing great. Um, ladybug larvae are actually uh, a little bit more voracious. They're growing really, really quickly. And they, all they do is they just crawl around the leaves all day long and eat aphids. So they're a great, great aphid control. And uh, because they can't fly, they're stuck on the plants. So even though they don't necessarily want to be out there, even though it's not the greatest environment for them, they're stuck because they can't fly. They just end up cruising around the plant, eating aphids uh, for their entire life. So um, that's one way that we deal with aphids in our system, uh, using biocontrols. It's really, really hard unless you can kind of uh, basically section them all off and seal them in and make sure they can't fly away because they will try to get out of this seedling uh, station. Everyone has dealt with ladybugs. You know they fly away really, really fast. So um, that's one thing that we do to control aphids in our growing environment, and it works really, really well, especially at seedling stage. So um, if you guys have seedling racks, many of you already do, I know, um, talk to us about some of these vinyl covers, and it makes it way, way easier to kind of keep all of those bugs in there just eating away on those aphids. Yeah, so, you know, we use ladybugs and uh, organic sprays. So we use ladybugs and some other products. Now, um, the best control is a combination, right? The best control is having a combo of different things. And we've done videos before on in, uh, integrated pest management 
as well as blog posts. So please check those out. There will be a link below uh, to blog posts we've done on integrated pest management. But you know, ultimately, uh, it just kind of comes down to what your needs are and what you're trying to do. With seedling uh, stage plants, it's hard to get really good kills, especially if you're letting them sit in there longer. If you're doing a longer seedling cycle, so you're letting those seedlings get a little bit bigger before transplant, it's really hard to get a good kill because there's just there's so many places for those bugs to hide and you don't get contact all the time. So ladybugs are a great, great way to kind of get down in the cracks and crevices of all these little baby plants and fish those aphids out and kill them. So uh, we order our ladybugs from hydrogardens.com, um, but you can get them a lot of different places, including online. You know, they're pretty hardy little animals, and so regardless of who you get them from, you'll probably end up with a pretty decent product. But getting them from folks that do a lot of volume, make sure that your product are fresh, right? Because these guys are stored. They're collected, and then they're stored in someone's fridge. So um, doing business with folks that do bigger volumes, like Hydro Gardens, Folks that are doing commercial supply, make sure that you get a good fresh product that's going to hit the ground running. So I hope this was helpful to you and hopefully it starts to dispel the myth that you can't use biocontrols in indoor growing environments. You absolutely can. You just have to be uh, kind of clever and thoughtful about how you do it. And um, ladybugs are a great product whether you're a greenhouse grower, an indoor grower. I highly recommend using ladybugs. They are voracious. They clean aphids out fast. So. Um, Thanks so much for watching. If you guys have questions, make sure you leave those questions below. And uh, as always, please subscribe.